pensions and paychecks. Could our public employees and elected officials really be sacrificing the quality of our community for their pensions and paychecks? Over $15 billion of Ohio's Public Employees Retirement System, or OPERS, is wrapped up in the real estate sector. Within this sector are open-ended funds. Now, while other investors are pulling back from these open-ended funds, OPERS has increased their position by 15%. An example of an open-ended fund is the J.P. Morgan Strategic Property Fund, a fund in which OPERS has historically been involved. Contained in this fund was the first partnership between J.P. Morgan and American Homes for Rent, who have now racked up $1.5 billion in joint ventures together. 900 million of which was just announced this year. The school employees retirement system as well as the police and fire pension all invest in the J.P. Morgan Strategic Property Fund. But it isn't just loyalty to J.P. Morgan and by proxy American Homes for Rent. OPERS and the school teachers' retirement system have also invested in Blackstone, owner of Invitation Homes, the largest publicly traded owner of single family rentals in the country. In 2021, Invitation Homes signed a five year deal with Pulte to build 7,500 single family rental homes. While the initial projects were not slated for Ohio, guess who was on stage at the Union County Economic Development Panel, hosted by Memorial Hospital, somebody should really look into their investments too, saying, grow or die. Matt Callahan, a division vice president of land acquisition for Pulte. Does this mean we're next on the Pulte Invitation Homes hit list? Scarily, one of our Planning Commission members, and let me just remind you right here, the Planning Commission is picked by the City Council. He works for a construction company that is part of the Blackstone portfolio. A company, quote, specifically created to be an energy transition accelerator. What the heck is an energy transition accelerator? Well, according to the Rockefeller Foundation, people like them, John Kerry, and Jeff Bezos channel billions of dollars in much needed private sector investment to phase out fossil fuels and accelerate renewable energy. One more thing, the investment staff at these public employees retirement systems get bonuses for good investing. There isn't much easier investing when you're part of a system that will rubber stamp the growth unleashed upon a community by a corporate landlord in which you've made your investments. See how that works? I think the information I found regarding public employees' pensions are just the tip of the iceberg. I'm just not smart enough to know where all to look. But I think you can see there is a serious conflict of interest between the performance of the pensions of these public employees and the citizens they were hired, and in some cases, elected, to serve. Now, about the city employees' paychecks, paychecks that come out of the city's general fund. Just like a lot of people, the city invests their money as part of their overall financial strategy. Since 2011, Red Tree Investment Group has handled a large portion of the city's assets. Their disclosure brochure says their investments may include government and government agency debt, which, indeed, their latest statement to the city shows the city is invested the most in government agency notes. Government agency notes are bonds issued by government-sponsored entities, or GSEs. 
entities shown here in this statement, like Federal Home Loan Mortgage, more commonly known as Freddie Mac, and Federal National Mortgage, or Fannie Mae, both end up to their eyeballs with corporate landlords. In 2016, it was reported 95% of distressed loans from these GSEs went to Wall Street investors, not in ways that ownership would be returned to the community. In 2017, Fannie Mae bestows a $1 billion loan on Blackstone for invitation homes probably what helped propel them to be the largest owner of single-family rentals. Let's not leave out Federal Home Loan Bank, currently under fire for accepting corporate welfare with little focus on affordable housing, which is strangely reminiscent of how our city leaders have been behaving. This is some really complicated stuff for me to wrap my head around. It's possible I may have misspoke or even misunderstood something along the way. I almost hope I have, because I'm thinking this is exactly how you cause a housing bubble. Give government loans and institutional backing from banks like J.P. Morgan to developers. Then make the public employees and elected officials who are supposed to oversee them financially vested on the developers getting their product to market. And this is just the city's investments. There's the county's investments, the school system's investments, Memorial Hospital's investments, whose own executive vice president stated in the Grow or Die July 5th Economic Development Panel, for us, it's important to see continued growth. One of the things is, to stay afloat, you need to make a margin. Expenses increase more quickly than revenues, and when that happens, the way to offset it is with continued growth. Are you starting to understand why it feels like no one's listening? Sean Heinley, owner of realestatepros.com, stated, Our fear is that at some point, these institutional investors will exit the market. When they all jump out, it will be another real estate crash. I want to point out that there's no way the average city employee, teacher's aide, city janitor, nurse, or any of the other many decent public servants know exactly what Oprah's is invested in. This report is not a condemnation of them. In fact, I bet a lot of us too are invested in these companies and we are just unaware of it. Maybe we should all become aware and use the power of our investment dollars to tell these corporate leeches to take a hike. Thanks. Yes.